Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, my name is John Bachala. I'm from Zambia. At the same time, I'm the Youth Map Research Fellow. So this afternoon, we're going to look at the project uh, that I'm currently doing. That is uh, using OpenStreetMap to map the instances of malaria among the vulnerable people of uh, Luano district, which is a central district in Zambia. So basically, this project is looking at uh, how best can uh, OpenStreetMap uh, try to understand the vulnerability of uh, uh, people who are in the little parts of Zambia. So I, we did this uh, last year. Um, but we're still doing it because there are a lot of things that we want to to do. So that's where our projects or the quality of the project where we are doing. So um, the area is uh, very, very uh, lacking, the vulnerability of the area. This area has a two topograph area. The other part is a uh, plateau and the other part is uh, it's not a plateau. So uh, the other part uh, experience most of the time flooding. Uh, as, uh, as well as you know, the, 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 cl the, the climate change also situation, so does brought also drought, uh, and the, uh, the place is less developed, and then there is a lot of poverty and diseases. So it was uh, this the old district was uh, being uh, said to be a district uh, that's three years ago. So when it comes to vulnerability, there are a lot of things that are yet to be implemented, such as clinic. Uh, health facilities and roads. So that's the reason why we said, okay, can we try to see if uh, our project as OSM uh, in Open Street, we can try to understand what is happening in that place. Yeah. So um, the first time that we went uh, for um, collecting data, uh, the first thing that we were trying to look was the prevalence of malaria by the age group. So remember that this is an area which is not developed. So for what we found was that the age between uh, 5 and 14 uh, was the highest, about 54%. So we're trying to ask ourselves, uh, what can be the reason? So we found out that um, uh, if uh, the, this period, uh, I can see the, just, just a minute, uh, between, May, between January and um, June, this is where the climax is for, for malaria. So, and then these are the, the age between 14 and 15, or between 5 and 15, they are the most vulnerable to this disease because of uh, lack of uh, parental care. Most of the time, at this uh, time, uh, most of them were spending more time into the, the field. And then when they come back, they do not pay attention to their children. The other issue that we find out was uh, the Ministry of uh, Health uh, usually distribute mosquito nets as well as do indoorist spray where they go and spray in the houses. But this is a village. So what happens is uh, when they go to distribute mosquito net, most of the, uh, the, the people there, they are not there. They are going into the fields. The other thing is uh, because there is uh, no proper planning, so certain houses were left out when uh, they were distributing mosquito net. So we tried to catch the whole area using uh, open sheet map by digitizing them and then to try to find out uh, how many houses last year were given uh, mosquito net as well as were uh, done with the spray. Yeah. So here the, the map shows uh, the thing that you have what you see here. Uh, it's a... Uh, Escarpment, okay? That is escarpment. And then, uh, so this is the, an area which is on the lower part, and then this one is uh, the, um, the valley. So um, people the, uh, in this uh, place, there is on, on one uh, clinic at uh, Kanyesha. And then the farthest is at uh, Copper Mine. So according to what we found that uh, the people that are along the road, they are the only people that have access to things like mosquito net, have access to things like uh, uh, spray. But the people, no, sorry, sorry for that. The people who stays this far, they do not have access to that. At times, when it rains a lot, these people are cut off from the rest of the district. 
So it is very difficult for Ministry of Health or any other organization that is trying to help to get the mosquito net as well as the medicine to these people. Uh, they ha because for you to go to this place, uh, place, you need to cross the, the mountainous region or a valley so to go to this place. So um, it's the same as Kanyesha. So we tried, by all means, it was very difficult for us even to reach there because it was done during the rain season. So this place has a catchment of about 1,000 people. And then from our research, about uh, 178 pregnant women got Maria out of it. And then uh, a lot were uh, male because also they do a lot of hunting. So the male do a lot of hunting. So when they are in the bush, uh, usually they sleep uh, just there in the bush or they are prone to be bitten by the mosquitoes. Yeah, so there are a lot of poachers which they poach ligamite. Yeah. And then uh, this is an instance of malaria among under five children at Kanyesha Health Center. So this was a data that was collected. And then we had to find out that uh, in February at Kanyesha, between February, somewhere there, April, that's where I have uh, instance over 100 people. This is like per day. They receive this per day. So that's how bad the situation is. So we, we were asking ourselves, why is it this uh, period? So if you look at this period, uh, this is the rain season period. And then this is the time when they are going into the field. Okay, so we observed something again. Uh, you know that malaria usually likes uh, vegetation, uh, green uh, things, as well as uh, water. So we are trying to look at uh, the, most of the areas they are waterlogged, so malaria is easy to breed in, uh, in those areas. So when we ask people the, if they know the intervention of how they can prevent malaria, everyone uh, were knowledgeable about it. But because they spend much of their time into the field, they were un unable to clear out or clean their surroundings so that they can keep away the mosquito net. So you find that by the time that they are done with uh, their um, cultivation in their farms, it's already uh, um, a dry season. So people will keep on suffering. So this has also contributed in terms of uh, education for the young ones. They do not go to the school. Also, most of the time when they seek, uh, they fail also to go and cultivate. So we are trying to, by all means, we are in, right now we are engaging the Ministry of Health because according to the Ministry of Health in Zambia, they want to get rid of malaria by 2021. But the reality is not possible. But in towns where we are coming from, some of us, yes, there is no malaria. But in the rural areas, that's where we have difficulties. I can give you an example. This is another uh, health clinic, health center, it's, a, no, it's, it's just a health center. We are also made to a player where the same thing was happening. Yeah. Um, one of the contributors, uh, environmental and ecological factors, are one of the greatest contributors to the highest number of malaria cases in the district. So we observe to say in the past, um, the change of the climate has also contributed to, to malaria. Um, like last year, unfortunately, certain part of southern uh, Zambia, we had no rainfall, which means if there is high temperature, the temperature is high, there is a lot of mosquitoes. So that is what is happening. Uh, so the, the, the district has experienced a lot of change uh, in the last three years from uh, the meteorological department, which has also increased in diseases, not only malaria, <coughs> excuse me, not only malaria, but even other diseases. Uh, but um, the most prominent was malaria. Uh, at Odum Kush, the one that I showed you here, uh, there is another thing that we didn't understand because this place is more of, uh, developed compared to the other one that I showed you. So we were told to say the people that come to this health post are very uh, the, those people that are coming from very very far areas so that are the one that uh, have this kind of a problem so we also noticed to say there is too much distance which we are also trying to compute it using the open street map we want to make a, um we we want to make a database that will be showing exactly where an individual is coming from when they report that this person has malaria so that it will be very easy for uh, the Ministry of Health and the, this health post to track them 
because mo uh, they do not have a base where they can track to say this patient is coming from that area. So that's the challenge that is there. Um, so when you look at uh, two factors, that is uh, drought and floods, both these factors, they support malaria. That's the, the, the challenge that is there. So if there is no rainfall, which means uh, th there is too much sun and then there's too much heat, then malaria will come out, uh, then mosquitoes will come out. And then if there is drought, you expect the, f uh, the area to be flooded, which means it will be a good place for the mosquitoes to, to breed. So these factors are also contributing to this uh, issue. Um, uh, when there is a lot of rain, certain parts of the district, as I mentioned, is cut off, so it is very difficult for the government and other agencies that try to help to take uh, medicine as well as uh, mosquito net and uh, uh, indoor rain spray. And then the other challenge is uh, when you look at the infrastructure for these uh, places, they are not very good when it comes to in the rest spray, those people that spray, you find that uh, it's only made with grasses, the infrastructure made with grasses. So today someone may spray the house to prevent uh, mosquitoes, but when the rains comes, that medicine or that chemicals will be washed out because of the type of the infrastructure. So malaria still continues. So it's a very, very big challenge. So the, this is making the, the Minister of Health to uh, the, the, the issue of uh, roads, very difficult for them to take the drugs. So when I was in the field, um, we had even one case where a certain area that was cut off, there was reported a patient who had died. So they had to wait for three days in order for the rains to finish, in order for them to go there. And then it's a mountainous uh, region. The only vehicle that goes there, it's uh, four by four. Yeah. All right, uh, so from here, what we are planning to do is, as I said, we are trying to make a database only specifically for rural areas. Those are uh, clinics that are in two rural areas, so, uh, for example, the Lono district, so that people are able to be, or the, the Ministry of Health is able to see where the patients for malaria are coming from. Uh, using our OpenStreetMap uh, data that is where we are doing the digitizing of the whole district. Uh, our aim is to make sure that uh, when that individual comes to the clinic, they uh, must uh, be educated on how to take care of themselves in, when it comes to malaria. But it is very difficult uh, even for Ministry of Health to target certain areas when they are distributing mosquito net if they do not know which hotspot areas do malaria occur. So our target is to find those hotspot areas where that malaria is uh, coming from. And then we pass on this information to the Minister of Health. It's okay, in your planning for next year when you want to distribute your mosquito nets, please can you look at into this area? Because according to the data that we are getting, uh, these are the hotspot area that uh, is showing on the map. So that's what we are trying to develop. Yeah. So... Uh, in my conclusion, uh, youth mappers are the one that is uh, sponsoring uh, the all project, as well as uh, my uh, that's one is my doctor, as well as the U.S. said, and then that's my university. Uh, thank you. Questions? Yes, sir. Come again. No, both. Yes, we want to focus on both. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the team that is working on this project? Who is doing the data analysis? Okay. S okay, so on the data analysis, there are about five people. Uh, OpenStreetMap Zambia as one of the organizations that we are working with. Also, um, youth mappers, uh, they're getting a lot of support from them. Also trying to get, um, we want to have a visualization from um, our map box so that we can, we can produce, because map box has been also uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, work in uh, malaria in Zambia, southern part of Zambia. So we're trying to also to engage them so that they can help with the visualization. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, 
that is very important question that you have asked. So we they were our primary because you cannot take change or to do anything in someone's land. So one thing that we did, we, did uh, we took the consent letter from our university and then we got involved with everyone, including the chief, uh, the, the, those people that, like the police officers, the church leaders, including the headmen, so that they understand what we are here for, including just generally everyone. So that's what we did. So we encouraged, uh, them also to make sure that they, if the neighbor suspects it's uh, something to do with Maria, I should encourage someone to go to the clinic as part of our intervention because our, our aim is to make sure that people be aware of it as we also try to find solution that can help them. Yeah. Any more questions? Right. Uh, thank you very much, John.